let's talk about some of the great matches, man, that you've had down the years. Because you know, I, I will start with the Rock, right? Because yeah. you, we, you know, you you just mentioned him. Um, yeah. I know, you, yeah, there he is. I know you've mentioned, um, you know, Rock Cena in in recent interviews and stuff, but like right. Rock Hogan, right? right? That right. is like to to me, and I know I've seen many guys talk about this too. If, if if you talk about the art of professional wrestling, right, right. and the, and the crowd, like that, might be the greatest match ever. It might be. I, I think I think it's one of them. It's up there. It's up there. It wasn't a technical match. It wasn't going exactly. to be a, the most technical match, the high flying match, or anything like that. But it was just it was a shoulder tackle. It was it was just like the show, even after the shoulder tackle. When Hogan gives Rock that shoulder tackle, he feeds back into that corner. Rock looks up, Hogan poses. The crowd just went nuts. It was just like, oh my god! I'm like, we got the crowd right. I mean, they had the crowd on the entrance. Yeah, on the entrance, and it was like we really didn't know which way they were going to go. But when they got behind Hogan like that, it was just phenomenal. It was like, holy shit! You know, you're icon against icon. And um, I mean, it was just to show that the, the reaction in Toronto Sky Dome. That I've never felt that that kind of reaction around in any any other match before. Mm. And, well, and the next night, you know, the way Hogan opens Raw was just insane. They just didn't yeah. stop, they didn't stop for like you know 10, 15 minutes. But I know. what I was going to ask you about that, you kind of led me into it. The the sort of change right now. I'm a big rock guy, so I'm watching right. it and I'm like, oh, go okay, rock. Um, yeah. But then obviously Hogan's come back and everyone's getting that nostalgia, and it's like, no, let's, let's go Hogan. Uh, for right. you, for you in the match and and them calling things on the fly. How, what is that like to adjust? Who's making the calls in that match? Um, that was a match. There was nobody on the earpiece really. That was a match between two vets, and they were going to call whatever they needed to call in the ring. We had the match planned and it was just two veterans that were like, you know, I'd probably say I was a more nervous one, <laughs> you know, even though in 2002, I'm in the business at that point, maybe 17 years, um, 16, 17 years. And I'm reffing for about maybe 10 or 12 years or so at that point, I was probably more than nervous one. I was marking out in that match. You know, um, in the beginning, because the crowd was unbelievable. They were just the face off, just got the crowd. Mm. And it was just so intense. So, I mean, it was just, um, it was a, quite an experience for me because uh, it was just uh, one of the most, and you know, at the time, you didn't know that was going to be one of the best matches ever, you know? And they just had, they just had, it. that match was built up to really, uh, wasn't going to be a high fly match, like I said, a technical match or anything, but it was just, it was built up to was so much like where they had to come through in that match, Rock and Hogan. And, it, and everything they did to all the old school stuff in the beginning with the shoulder tackle and this and the big shove off and all that, it worked. Mm -hmm. And it just, everything worked. The bump took, you know, the bump that I took later on in the match worked out great. Um, you know, I remember Hogan hurting his ribs. You know, I know he had previous problems with his ribs and then he re-injured him on the rock bottom on the first one or something. So it was just, uh, but it was an intense match all the way through. And then they really, they came through in that match. Hogan and Rock came through. I mean, when it comes to the actual, no, and I guess this goes for every WrestleMania, but I'm going to centralize it to this particular match. How right. far in advance do you know? And you must be like, I want that match. Oh, uh, if, well... I, I found out about it a week or two before that match. It was like about a week or two. You find out what match you're going to get for WrestleMania. Hmm. So, um, and we really, you know, we rehearsed it very little, you know, not too much. Kind of, we, re we rehearsed a bump, rehearsed a couple other things, but it was, everything panned out. So, but it was just, when I got that match, it was, it was actually coming off um, 2002, and I remember Earl had did a match with, uh, I think it was either Rock and Angle or something like that, like previous six months prior to that or something in a, in a pay-per-view. And I remember Rock came up to me, though, about a week ago. He said, hey, he said, Chi-Chi, you got my match at WrestleMania. And I went, oh, shit. I'm like, awesome, man. Because, <laughs> you know, growing up, 
with Hogan, when I came in, Hogan was like the top star in the business and what he's done for the company, selling out crowds all over the world, United States and all over the world. And then where Rock came in and what he had put himself in a position in 2002, he was already an icon in the business. Mm. He was drawing big money for us all over the world, everything, great talent. And it was just like uh, icon against icon. And you, you look at it, do I respect? Do I respect it? And do I have more like, wow, like nowadays when I'm looking at that match? Yeah, of course. Like back in the day, it was just another match. Yeah. You know, but it was just another match that got a hell of a reaction. And um, they came through it. And it should have been the last match on the card that night. Oh. And the company kind of, Jericho even knew. He's, he's kind of saying, I remember like all day. And we had talked about it. He goes, I knew we shouldn't have been the last match of that night. You know, I know it. I was trying to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it's very cool, though, that The Rock kind of came and gave you the news, right? Like, you know, yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe he had a say in that. Obviously, you, you worked with him no. after and beyond. No, he definitely has a say in that. The talent definitely has a say. There's a producer in there that has a say. Michael Hayes will, will point, you know, or certain guys. And, you know, they have, they have a say. You know, they go, they pitch it to the producer. They'll say, hey, I want this referee. And then Bruce said, okay, fine. Or, you know, so, I mean, it really comes with what's the talent is more comfortable with the referee in their match than more the office. Yeah. Well, so when you came backstage after Rock and, and Hogan, I'm assuming oh, everyone was just like euphoric. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Standing ovation the whole bit, you know, to the match. And um, I did my part and it was just, it was great. It was a great accomplishment in my career, you know, looking back at it now. 